Alhamdulillah. So, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. I bear witness there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. I want to greet the listening audience of words of peace and of paradise. Assalamu alaikum. We have a beautiful, beautiful program today. Uh, our guests today are in the health field. And Lord knows that in our community, we need as much information. And the beauty about information is it works perfectly when we apply those things. So without um, for any further ado, you know my motto, the best person to uh, describe or introduce themselves or the person itself. So let's start with our dear doctor. Doctor, I hope I say your name, Eminence. 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 Okay, I was close. All right, tell people a little bit about yourself and uh, what your program is about, sister. Okay. Uh, well, assalamu alaikum to everyone that's viewing or tuning in to this program. My name is Sister uh, Student Minister Dr. Eminence. I am in Detroit, Michigan, Muhammad Mosque number one. I'm not originally born here, but I'm here by the grace of Allah. I love it in Detroit. So what I do for a living is I am a holistic practitioner. I am also a Reiki master, a master herbalist. I have a school where I teach people different healing modalities and I'm an author. I have over 12 books, but I have more, but I'm talking about as far as published. I also write literature for educational facilities and establishments, uh, which you know, I don't own those books per se because I write curriculums for them. I am also a student in the ministry class at Muhammad Mas number one. Shout out to student minister, brother Troy Muhammad, who does an excellent job of shepherding the flock. I used to be a pastor. So my passion has always been to service people and help people. I I love to see other people get to the point that they desire to get to. So I call myself the canvas. But my mother always told me I had the healing touch. So i.e. my business is called Eminence Healing Energies. I do everything under that umbrella. Um, so you might, I might, you might see a business of mine that's not eminent healing energies, but everything falls under that umbrella because that's what I ascertain is to have healing energies. So it got started because of my grandfather dying with um, cancer. And then I just couldn't keep my hands off of people. So of course I had to get these hands licensed because you can't <laughs> go around touching people, but exactly. I'm a very touchy person. Like I could just walk up to you and I could tell something's off. And like, I just, I, I just, that's just what I love, you know, not trying to sound spooky or creepy, but ah, promote, promote what Allah gave you. It ain't spooky. Promote what Allah gave you. That's just what, yeah. And, um, also, um, my mother is like the best chef I ever met. So I was raised up in a restaurant setting. So of course I know how to cook. So with that, um, I do cook for, uh, at Muhammad Mas number one, I cooked when I was at the study group before I came to uh, Muhammad Mas number one. And I used to cook at the church that I was a pastor at. So I do have uh, cooking books because when I joined the Nation of Islam and I learned about that Navy bean, you know, that wonderful Navy bean. So when I learned about the Navy bean, I decided that I was going to make everything Navy bean. So in my cookbooks, I teach you how to make everything navy bean navy bean pie crust navy bean bread navy bean hamburger buns navy bean hot dog buns navy bean hot uh, sausage links navy bean sausage crumbles for tacos and different stuff uh navy bean enchiladas burritos navy bean pizza crust navy bean uh mac and cheese cuz i do a lot of gluten free stuff as well so that's the that's the meal options but then i have a dessert options where i teach you like three different types of navy bean pie um, navy bean ham pies, navy bean banana pudding, navy, I mean, just navy bean cake, brownies, yeah, navy bean me. everything. And then I have a smoothie book and desserts. I mean, it's not desserts, but it does have navy bean sherbet, navy bean protein shakes, navy bean uh, smoothie bowls, because you know, those are trending. So what I try to do in my uh, catering company is whatever's trending, I always made a navy bean version. So because I'm kind of back and out of so much of the cooking, I decided to put the cookbooks out so that my customers, because uh, I do meal prep, I have a meal prep service as well. They won't be like, you know, can't get the product. They can make it themselves. Or yes, if they have a personal chef, their personal chef 
can, you know, whip up the navy bean items that they love. So that's just my navy bean. And then I have a Wayne Properly Eating to Live course, which I have over 500 believers that are active in that course. Um, in that course, I have uh, deciphered the what the messenger said about weighing properly. It's not just about food. So we have we go into meditation, we go into yoga, we go into um, food journaling and just understanding the correlation between bad emotions and bad food, good emotions and good food. It's just basically the science of food, but it's put into a curriculum that's a duration of 12 weeks. And because, you know, I love doing it by the 12 because we have the 12 steps of development. Yes, so and then we have the love it. So we're going to do this because right now you said a lot of key things. Okay. And <laughs> yes. I want to make sure I get the jewels in there because you had a lot of signs and a lot of, we had a, you want to make sure that the listening audience who may not be nation friendly can understand the significance okay. of number 12, science and mathematics. And you have a definitely a good heart. And speaking of good hearts, our brother Tariq is a, uh, yeah. he deals with heart health. So brother Tariq, give a little background about yourself, good brother, and what you do as far as your commitment to help our community, good brother. Yes, sir. Well, um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, all praise is due to Allah, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Uh, as, a, as my brother st stated, you know, I am involved in heart health. I'm a biomedical research scientist by training. Uh, my background is in cardiovascular pathobiology, which is it's pretty much like studying how diseases form in the heart and in the blood vessels. Um, my... I, I took a little bit of a detour when it came to my medical training and I focused a lot on um, agricultural research and my agricultural research was centered around uh, the Navy bean actually. And um, most of it, it deals with most of my Navy bean work deals with uh, developing different types of uh, blood clot medications, you know, that, that will derive from the bean um, diabetes uh, medicine, uh, upper respiratory tract infections, uh, thyroid medication, stuff like that. So I, I pretty much was inspired by the work of Dr. George Washington Carver and the things he did with the uh, soybean, sweet potato, and, and, and the peanut. And I wanted to see, you know, what can be done with the Navy bean, not, not so much on a dietary level, but on a medicinal level and even an industrial level, you know, developing different types of cosmetics and, and uh, industrial grade, you know, products that that will be applied to you know uh, a cleaning environment or or even a, a, a automotive environment you know so it, it just depends on you know what part of the of the, of the being that I'm that I'm working with or that I, I, that I'm isolating but primarily the work I've done with that being has been related to cardiovascular health and dealing with you know blood clots and, and heart failure and, and, and preventing uh, ischemia which is, uh, you know, death of is which is pretty much the death of tissues when they have been deprived of oxygen, you know. So that that's pretty much my uh, my background when it comes to heart health. I'm not going to go too too far into my background because you know just for the sake of time. Yes, sir. But well, praise be to Allah. But um, one thing about students is that we we are taught to learn, out, listen to key words, and right. one of the things that both you and our beloved doctor has in common, we spoke about the navy bean. And a lot of the people may not understand the science behind the Navy bean. So uh, either one of you can chime in on this. Uh, let's break down the science and what's in the Navy bean. So a lot of people know that we are known for the bean pie, which has Navy beans in it. And people frown upon that when they never heard of that, say you guys make pies out of Navy bean or we eat Navy bean soup. A lot of people don't, don't understand, but if you've ever been to a, a uh, one of our meetings and we're serving a, a dinner, you'll notice that we will have a soup with a salad and there's a science behind that. So maybe Dr. Dr. Edmonds, you can probably uh, start with that part, being that you deal with catering and you deal with the Navy bean. Can you break down the significance health aspect of the Navy bean and why is it applied to um, part of our course of meal? For the Navy bean, um, First of all, I would like to say dealing with the on the food aspect is it tastes good. Like surprisingly, it tastes good. Any recipe that you're trying to have, like it's a good thickening agent. So you can when you say you make a soup, 
say you make a chicken soup. Let's just say you made a chicken soup, right? And you know, the broth is real runny. Instead of adding like cornstarch, which is bad for you, you can add the medicinal navy bean. You just blend it up and then you just put it in there and it'll thicken it up naturally. And it also is adding nutrients. The navy bean is from what I have researched. I don't know if it's changed. The only bean that cannot be genetically modified. They will try to put like the North, great Northern beside it, the black bean and red beans and kidney beans to try to confuse consumers. But if you go grocery shopping, you will see those old Caucasians getting bags of navy beans. You will see that. They eat the navy bean because by the way, we did not name the navy bean the navy bean. It has its name directly from the U.S. government who named it the navy bean because that's what the soldiers were eating and consuming to fight off the red radiation in the war. So in the climate of today's world with all of this, uh, what is it, G, uh, what is it, the fives and the fours when it comes to the... Mm -hmm. um, what is it, Brother Tariq? What is that called? The towers uh, with the four and the five uh, gigs and stuff? Uh, yeah, those, those um, 5G towers. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so with all of that, we're, we're walking around like cancer in incubators because our bodies naturally have cancer in them. Every single one of us. It's in remission. So when you're surrounded by all of this uh, towers of 4G and 5G, and you're not eating and consuming food items that are going to fight that, like drinking chlorophyll, spirulina, chlorella. Um, I will say if you're tuning in, that's one tablespoon of uh, chlorophyll, one tablespoon of, <clears throat> of chlorella, one, I mean, of spirulina, one teaspoon of chlorella. That's a good recipe to consume every day. But also for your diet, eat that navy bean because no other bean did. Massafar Muhammad, and those of you who are not Muslim, we in the Nation of Islam, we believe that Massafar Muhammad is a law in the person, and he came to give us a diet, and that's what the Holy Bible talks about as well, that God would come teach the people what to eat. So we know that to be true, and if you do some more research, you will see that, but that's probably for another episode, but the navy yeah. bean is the only bean that we are advised to consume, and on the consumption of that bean, you can have a fighting chance in this war of radiation because it's going to get worse. It is going to get worse. And just to back that up in the How to Eat to Live books, it tells us about the soybean. And at that time, the soybean wasn't even on the market the way it is. He said they're introducing. Now you have uh, soy protein in almost everything you buy. You can't buy a snack without it having, if it doesn't have pork, it has soy protein because it's cheaply produced and the soy less lessening and all of these products that are made with the soy are targeting our hormones the navy bean is a hormone stabilizer so i just wanted to address key facts it's good for cancer it's good for hormone uh, stabilization it's good for high blood pressure because it helps with insulin resistance and which most people who suffer from hormone disrupt dis imbalances are suffering directly from their glucogen and glycose processing in their body in the ATP. So you're eating food, you're not getting any nutrient from it to give you the energy. But if you start consuming items like the navy bean, like we are instructed, you will notice your energy levels change. You won't be so fatigued because now your body will start processing the food properly to give you that energy. So the navy bean is should be a staple in every home you don't have to be muslim just know do some research and you'll see you want to be fighting and combating this because like we have these free radicals in our body so the navy bean helps with that and like the brother is dealing with heart health the navy bean is great for heart health so that's yes, man praise be to a lot you, you had a lot of key things i'm gonna come back to you because uh being that you are a minister prior to you coming into the nation uh, God has given us every dietary law to follow. So maybe there's something that we can help our people who are Christian or who you know are heavy into the Bible that we can give reference to how God told us how to eat from those references in the Old Testament. But to Brother Tyreek, um, the sister said a great um, point in reference to heart health. And a lot of our community deals with obesity, being overweight. And we are, sometimes we choose certain foods to eat 
But being that we talk about the Navy bean, or if you know any other uh, items that we could talk about, the healthy fats and the things that build up cholesterol and there's good and bad cholesterol, can you give a little bit of understanding to the good and bad cholesterol, knowing the difference and what the good and bad fats are that people are definitely contributing more to, especially fried foods, Brother Tariq? Sure, sure. You know, and, you know, Sister Mary, just to kind of double back on what our sister was saying about, you know, cancer already being in our, in our bodies. Outside of cancer, right, you have other things that are also naturally in our bodies, like cholesterol. You know, without cholesterol, your cells wouldn't be able to absorb anything properly. It's, it's a it's a it's a barrier on the surface of your cells that allow things to come in and go out. You know, so oftentimes, you know, when it when it comes to any health issue of any kind, really, it's health. These these diseases are really an exaggeration of stuff that's already in us. So let me let me put it to you like this. I was just telling um, our, our European regional uh, minister on his platform that atherosclerosis or the, the clogging of the arteries and this this cholesterol buildup, right, is misplaced cholesterol uh, buildup in the arteries. You know, these these arteries are, are made to conduct blood th throughout the body and make sure that all the nutrients get to where they're supposed to get. But sometimes there are things in our blood, you know, that are already there that can become, that can be turned into weapons against us because of the types of food that we're eating. And one of those weapons things that can be turned into weapons is cholesterol. So the enemy is very clever. You know, he's not gonna put anything new in you. He's gonna give you things that will infl infl inflame existing things in you. So he's gonna focus on what's already there. So cholesterol really, like I was saying before, is a barrier to different things that come in and out of the cell. It's also something that helps to transport certain things throughout the body. You know, it's, it's a very waxy substance. It's a very, uh, thick substance. So it's eat. It, so it, when you're eating the improper foods like your cheeseburgers, your pizza, or the the high high, the foods that are high in, in what's called trans fats, which is really fake fat. Uh, these these uh foods amplify these uh these blood products like cholesterol, and then they begin to build up in your blood over time, and cause blockages along with you know. Uh, different types of cell debris, other types of things in the in the blood, you know. So one of the things that that one of the ways that we can classify these different types of fats or cholesterols is LDLs and HDLs. So the HDL is good, the LDL is bad. So protein, uh, high high density lipoprotein, which is what L HDLs HDL stands for, high density lipoprotein. It's protein that allow that pretty much conducts how that protein will interact within the blood and within the cells, right? So when it's high, you know that protein has a has a higher chance of making sure that that protein gets to where it needs to go. If it's low, then it has a lower chance of making sure that that protein gets to where it needs to go. So if the LDLs are present more often. Times you know you'll see the uh, you'll see a higher chance of uh, the plaque in the cholesterol building up in the arteries and and eventually causing what we know as a heart attack or a stroke. So the, that's that's pretty much you know cholesterol in a nutshell and making sure that you know we understand where what types of fats are good, what types of fats are bad. Now, to be honest with you, there's no such thing as bad fat. The fat that that we have been educated or been taught is bad is the is the fat the processed fat that that has been incorporated into the foods that we eat. that's the bad fat so the fat that we are the fat that we already have in our bodies that's good fat but it becomes bad by the types of foods that we eat very yeah. to a great point and this too what um you were saying doctor is um the, the food and because food pretty much as the brother said we have things in us but Sometimes we feed disease by the choices of the foods that we uh, get addicted to, especially sure. the white the white sugar and things of that nature. So, Doctor, as far as you are coming from a background of um, the ministry from the you know, the church, soul food. Now uh, we know many of us prep soul food, and we do more for taste than knowing that what we're actually feeding our bodies. And this is not to shame anybody because we have a lot of unhealthy people, no matter if you are Muslim, Christian, Buddha, whatever it is, 
bad habits are bad habits. So it's not the single in one out, but we're talking about the conditions in the black community. And one of the things that we want definitely want to get your opinion on from both of you is the soul food, how we prep it and the, the swine. And if you can add some biblical references to that, that'd be great. So they can go to it. Because a lot of people, when I had this discussion with one brother, and he says that J Jesus forgave how God taught us how to eat, which is not true because God said, I came to fulfill the laws. It was saying, I didn't come to change not one word, one eye order or anything. I'm just paraphrasing, but can you give some reference to that, dear doctor? I, well, about the soul food, you start talking about people's diet. Dr. Aleem said one time, you know, People, you are not what you eat. You are what you ate. So people will be riding with you and it's all good until you start talking about their food. It's like that food starts speaking. It becomes a demon and it'll, it'll, it might curse you out, you know? So it's not just the Black community because uh, most of us, like I was raised in a household where, you know, my cuisine was not American cuisine because, uh, you know, you have parents that are not from America per se, you, you eat the diet from where they're from. And that isn't always healthy either, you know, because my father being Haitian, they eat a lot of the same food as like Dominicans and the, the um, uh, the, uh, gosh, the Dominicans, the Puerto Ricans, uh, you know, because they eat food using stuff like sofrito and stuff that contains MSG. That's the big corporate, you know, like he does with heart. Once you start consuming MSG, you really start messing your body up. It has it has long term effects. And I mean, you remember when Chinese food used to be like the huge craze. That was because they were putting all of the MSG in it. And now people aren't as addicted because they've put a lot of restrictions on the what they can use inside that food. So now they do a lot of the soy sauce because that's a taste that keeps people coming back. So it's just like with soul food, you have all of this salted pork and people who don't eat pork, they're using the smoked meats and smoked meats are horrible for us. Like, they take the meat, they put it in the smokehouse and it's salted to death. And even like with African cuisine um, and even like Jamaicans, they use salted fish. This is a fish that has been salted down and cooked with salt. Like it's preserved with salt. So when you consume that, that is so, it's like, and most people don't even follow the instructions because the instructions on those items are like boil it, pour the water off and then cook it. No, most people just put it put it right in it. They'll make a big <laughs> old pot of beans and right. throw the smoked turkey in there. Didn't didn't follow the instructions because there are cooking instructions on there. So what I try to do, because a lot of my clients, they're not going to stop eating meat. And the messenger did give them guidelines to consuming meat. So although I don't like to force, you know, how to eat to live on them, I do tell them like, look, are you a truth seeker? Are you a knowledge seeker? There's a book you need to get because if you're going to eat meat, you need to eat the best meat. And then I try to educate them. Educating is always the best method when it comes to enlightening someone because it's, it can't be me. It has to be something higher than me. So in Leviticus, um, I think it's 11, seven. And if I'm not saying it right, you know, I believe it's a Leviticus 11, seven. That is like, what you have to tell the Christians, because that's where it um, got Jehovah is telling them, like, don't consume pork through Moses. He's telling them that do not consume pork. But like the modern day Christian will say, Jesus said, it's not what goes into the man that defiles them. I believe that's in Ma Matthew and Luke. It's not what goes into a man that defiles them. It's what comes out. You know, so they take that just like us Muslims. We take what we can and that's called mixing truth with falsehood. And we 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 cover it because when you tell a Muslim, because we have to be real and open. And this is how you keep people understanding we're not perfect. Like you said, there's we're obese, too. We're battling this battle of the bulge. You have I'm gonna go back into that, but you have to understand the science of what happens to your body when you put the wrong food in. OK, a fat cell never dies. You never kill a fat cell. It flattens. 
it flattens. And if I say anything that's not right, Brother Tyree, you could chime in and correct me because I'm not above correction. You know, we all oh. educate, but sometimes oh. you forget stuff. You get me? But from my understanding, a fat cell just flattens. It never goes away. So what happens in the body is when you put a food supply in there, it's supposed to break it down. That's what you got your liver for. That's what you got your pancreas for. Pancreas uh, producing uh, uh, all of your hormones and chemical responses, your neurotransmitters, all of this is correlated to the proper functioning of your liver. And most people are dying from liver uh, cirrhosis and kidney failure. And it's because of these large consumptions of overprocessed foods and chemicals and sugar. White sugar is just everywhere. It's so cheaply ready and it's in everything they won't even take the time to make it with cane sugar and i ask myself all the time why couldn't this be made with cane sugar why does it have to be it doesn't have to be made with white sugar it's a direct attack but going back to what i'm saying so when you put that food in the body the body can't process it everything's done on a timely frame with the body the body is designed to function a certain way so because it cannot decipher what is good and what is bad because it's going to excrete what's bad but because it can't it, it when you put bad food in your body the body doesn't know what to do it's trying to get the best of it process it give you the energy that you need in a timely fashion but what happens is because the body's designed to function by a loss panawata allah whoever or jehovah whatever you say created is your creator it's designed to work a certain way so it is readily moving so it creates fat cells because it cannot find where to place it. So that's why you get this swell because it's like artificial fat because it's not really fat that was in the makeup. It's not like you went and drunk a, a container of lard or a gallon of oil or anything. Um, and besides that, please use butter. I know people want to be vegan and stuff like that, but butter is the best thing to use as far as uh, sauteing and different aspects like that butter like oils get away from all these oils the messenger even said don't mix oil with me um and it, it like and so when we're cooking certain items we gotta be mindful use butter this vegan stuff come on it, it has to stop that's not god's law he called this in the bible the land of milk and honey so everything in this world is so opposed to what god said and god desired it's inside out and upside down. And now people are saying they won't even have honey because honey comes from bees, which is an insect, which we have, we're taught in the Quran about bees, you know, about honey and in the Bible about honey. And now this world says, don't consume honey, be vegan. Don't consume milk. Don't consume cheese. We have a whole section in the Quran, al or the cow. So it, it just open your eyes. Why are they trying to tell you not to? Because Milk is liquid sunlight. Yes, some of us are lactose intolerant. There are ways to still consume it. You boil it, like the messenger said, get you some good raw milk and boil it, and you'll be fine. Or, or just consume butter and cheese if you can't have milk. But back to what I was saying about the fat being the fat cells. This is where obesity is coming from. Eating cheap cookies, eating cheap meats, all this cheap food, the body gets eradicated. It cannot decipher what's what and it creates fat cells and mind you we already went over fat cells are not destroyed they're flattened so when you lose weight you're flattening it but if you were to go back to eating bad now it's the new fat and the old fat cells are going to fill back up so that's why people say i lost weight and i'm two times bigger because you never them fat cells were still there that's why it has to be a lifestyle don't go on no diet make it a lifestyle how to eat to live is a lifestyle. Okay, that's all. Awesome. You know, um, just to echo what my sister was saying about, you know, the, the, the fat cells, she's absolutely right. You know, they they are really just storage containers. You know, they're, 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 they're storage containers. And it goes back to what we were saying about the foods that we eat, exaggerating things that we already have. And it's it really exaggerates it. You know, it, it's, it's the fat cells are meant to store things that are, you know, either good for you or bad for you. And, you know, and oftentimes when it's bad for you, they swell up and they 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 give you this appearance that you're not particularly proud of. You don't want to show you on Zoom. You don't want to show a certain half of your body. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, yes, you know, my, my cheeks, man, I'm telling you, over the pandemic, my cheeks swelled up like to like chipmunks. 
And I was looking at myself on camera. I was like, you know, like, damn, I ain't never had fat cheeks, you know? So I had to do something about that. I had to, you know, go back to, you know, just because it during the pandemic family, you know, and the potential, as much as they like to say it, the pandemic is not completely gone, right. you know, during, during the onset, the early onset of the pandemic and, and the, the beginning stages, you know, a lot of people were trying to just figure out what was going on. Their mental state was uh, not normally where it's not where it should be, not where it, where it would be normally. Let's put it that way, you know, and then we were trying to cope with the deaths we were seeing, the sickness and different things like that, being indoors all the time, not being around the people we love, you know, so we cope with food, you know, food, like the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us along with sex, money, sleep, all these things are gods in their own right, you know, so when we are under the influence, when something can put, can have influence on us, it's a god, you know, when something can determine what we do day to day it's a god you know so the enemy is it, like i said before he's so clever he's so clever and we underestimate him so much to the point where you know you know i'm good as long as i as long as i you know if i if i eat the way i want to eat as long as i fast on friday i'm good nah <laughs> nah so and, and fasting is a, is a very important part of this conversation because we often you know, look at fasting as some type of, uh, you know, some type of, vegans. yeah, vegans, like a trend, you know, yeah, but fasting, right. fasting is only as good as you allow it to be. And what do I mean by that? We, if you don't have the tools to properly have, uh, take advantage of the benefits of fasting, it's not going to work. You know, you can't eat the way you want to eat and then expect, your fast to be successful. Fasting is something that is done to rehabilitate or to rejuvenate the body. But how can the body rejuvenate itself if it doesn't have the proper tools to do so? You just got finished feeding your body with junk. Your body can't rejuvenate itself with junk. It needs to rejuvenate itself with, 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 with things like amino acids, which the Navy bean has all nine essential amino acids in itself. You know, you, your body needs to rejuvenate itself with proteins, vitamins, minerals. It can't rejuvenate itself with hamburgers, pizza, and French fries. It can't do that. So if, if we if we're just mindful of, you know, what just what our sister was saying, just be mindful of what the body truly is. It's autonomous. It doesn't really need us, but we interfere with the with the mess that we put it through. You know, so. Just keep in mind that what the body is, it's it's a self-governing entity. And it, it the only time it really needs us is through nutrition. And when we give it the proper nutrition, it can take care of itself. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And you you was reading my mind, brother, because I was gonna say, uh, God gave us the defense on how to discipline ourselves, which is fasting. Right. Fasting is not only um the the absence of food but it creates the discipline and it also enhances our, our cells and our body like you said things that help rejuvenate because our immune system's in our core and when we are belly fat all those things when you you know we you build up belly fat it's best with your hormones your balance goes off the system mentioned sugar those things help mess with your mood your moods we eat bad carbohydrates so when you are sitting there you're angry all the time you're moody and you're constantly eating ice cream, potato chips, and all those other things that come with it, cakes, uh, the breads. Uh, all those things contribute to our mental state and our, and our physical state. But right. one of the things I want to get from both of you is about, you mentioned the science. And this enemy of ours is a, is a master scientist because, um, I guess I'm 50 years old, and we didn't have a whole bunch of preservatives and foods. Once upon a time, you know, whatever it was, that was the food item. May have had a couple of things here and there, but it wasn't at the degree where if you look at what's in the market today, there are paragraphs of preservatives in there. And our people, if they're not um, studied, they only see the picture on the box. Okay, this is, I see the picture, that's it. But they don't never turn it around to actually read what's in there. So some people... Um, don't know what MSG. I'm glad she explained what MSG is, but they just see what they see. It costs this much, and they just do it in the, in the food cart. So just to 
uh, put it in context, fasting, eating one meal a day helps you save money because you're not overeating. Overeating is more expensive than eating healthy. Some people yeah. say it costs too much, but truth be told, overeating costs more. So if you eat out in a restaurant, let's say your meal is like 16 to $18, and you eat three times a day with that same amount, do the mm-hmm. mathematics. The money you spent for those three meal items, you could have bought a whole week worth of groceries or a couple of days worth of groceries if you prep it and you cook it. And we got to be more mathematicians on how we deal with finances. So when we buying food, are we buying it to fulfill a void? Like you said, it's an addiction because food is an addiction. But to the point I want to bring into is the food labels, the, the science behind the, those chemicals in the foods that contribute to diabetes, uh, heart health, obesity. Can we expound on those things, doctor? Then we get to Brother Tariq. Well, it's for me, I mean, I'm not a stickler about purchasing items, process anything. Like I don't purchase anything like in my home, because let me just give a, 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 a little bit. When I came to the nation, I was like 350 pounds, you know, so I will never, ever with the help of a lot, see that again. But so my testimony is a witness bearer of these teachings work, work. I mean, they work, but you have to work them. You have to, because in the church, this is how it goes. Because I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. Like I joined the church at 14 years old. I just woke up one day and I, I just was walking around the house and I was just reading the Bible like a mad person, you know, and I, and I developed a thirst for it. Like, And then when I had my son, just a little glimpse about this, that's how I reared my son. Like my son right now, today is his birthday, alhamdulillah, he's 24. So when I had my son, I reared my son, we'd be at the, I bought him every instrument known to man, you know, we'd be at the piano having Bible lessons and singing and playing the piano till like two or three in the morning. This, and I'm not talking about sometimes this was every single day. My son didn't. My son at 17 would say, mom, can I go to the store? Had his own car and everything. But that's just how tight we were because I fed him the word of God. So I joined the nation. He was nine and homeschooled and did all of that. And I say this to say, if you will not submit to what you say you believe, and I still ran my business. So if you will not submit to what you say you believe, then you won't see the results that it is that you desire. And my son, I don't care what he eats today. He will never say mom gave me bad food. You know, he, he never got a soda from me. He never got, he he was a vegetarian. So whatever he does today, the Bible says, teach them the way that they should go. And when they grow, they shall never depart. They will return because they understand, you know, they, they might go out here and they'll realize The food you said eat is best. And then you tell them, no, I didn't say eat that food. That's what God said, eat, you know, and praise be to Allah that I joined the nation of Islam, you know, because I was uh, still in college when I joined. And at that time, like I was studying under this doctor. I don't want to say his name because, you know, but I was studying under him. He was my, he was my actual physician and my son. And when I started losing weight, he was telling me, whoa, you're going to, you're losing too much weight. You need to stop. Because I went to eating one meal a day. Then I went to eating one meal every other day. Then I was at a point eating one meal once a week. I have pictures where I didn't even like it, but I'm just saying, you you know, you, I was diving into it. So now I kind of know what body size I want, you know, how you can kind of gauge it. Like if I'm better at my body type one meal every other day or one meal a day. You got to get to know your body. A lot of people that are watching this don't even know their blood type. You can't even eat properly because you don't even know your blood type. You don't know your levels. Like the brother is talking about cholesterol. The doctors will have you think potassium is so bad. You need potassium. It's essential. You know, it helps with your nervous system. It helps. It just, it's, 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 essential so you're trying to avoid stuff you don't even know if your body has high levels like you heard someone else say consume a lot of garlic you don't know if that's bad for you because garlic can also be toxic for certain people so it's like get to know your personal body type get to know your personal levels because you can do more damage than good so 
anything you consume should be based on that. Just because I could have broccoli, I might not eat cauliflower. You know, there are certain food items that we all just can't partake in the same way. Some people can't have cabbage. Some people can't have any kind of strawberry or sunflower seeds because it it, it it doesn't help their body type, you know? We just have to know these things. And back to what you're saying about reading food labels, start learning how to cook. That's the best food label because you're going to take one ingredient ingredients and make food. You're going to take and put that butter in the pan, saute your vegetables, put a little salt, pepper. If you want to add onions and garlic, you can but learn how to cook. It doesn't take a long time. And if you don't know how to cook, start purchasing baked goods from people you trust. You'd rather go buy the box of Little Debbie that costs $2 than spend $10 or $15 for a nutritious dessert if you must have it. It's all about being what you put your, what you say is important. Because if I say I want to drive the best car, but I'm eating at McDonald's or I want to drive, I, I got a Porsche, but I'm eating hot Cheetos, you know, that cost $2. You won't spend X amount of dollars for better quality food. So your priorities are all wrong because you'll be sick in that Porsche, can't even drive it, you know? So that that's basically learn how to cook. Learn how to cook and learn how to meal prep if you don't have time. It's not an excuse to say, I work a lot. I can't uh, cook healthy meals. That's not an excuse these days. You can learn how to meal prep. They have courses for that. There's uh, YouTube videos. Learn how to meal prep. You can make one big meal. It's better to portion it up and do it that way than every day you're eating out all day, every day, because everybody can't eat one meal a day. You, you all are in agreement of that, right? Like it's you, especially you, Brother Tariq, you know everybody can't consume one meal a day. Some people do have health conditions and they do take medicine and they will cause detriment to their body trying to eat one meal a day. The messenger didn't even advise that. He had a whole separate protocol for people who are sick. You know, we try to push that off on everybody. Somebody says they have diabetes and high blood pressure and you're like, well, fast and it'll get rid of it. You you could kill that person because you don't know what you're talking about. Scientifically, you said what, brother? I'm saying, come on. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So <laughs> you should just be quiet. When you don't know what you're talking about, just be quiet. Fasting is for the healthy body people. Let's get those people to the point where they can fast. It's not that they won't forever be able to, but they have to be brought up to that level. Praise be to Allah if you're already there where you're healthy enough to withstand a fast because fasting can kill you if you're not ready. So I will say, don't just jump into it. Listen to the messenger. He said, break it down to two meals a day. And if you take medication that you have to take food with that medication, Take the medication around your meal time. You Dr. know, Andrews, before you before we go on that point, and before I get to Brother Tyreek, and I, I'm I'm in agreement with you because I don't have the level. I'm a personal trainer by trade, but once again, you you and Brother Tyreek had a different level than I am, and I have no problem submitting to that. But one of the things I always share with any of my clients is get a qualified um, holistic doctor or a doctor who knows the science of nutrition and the medical field, because a lot of people do sincerely want to go into holistic health and eating properly, but don't have the science. It's not, that, it's not that you can't do it, but everything requires a different mathematical formula. That's what math and science is all about. The body is one mathematical formula. So would you advise from your standpoint, this way, you know, it has some credibility to it. When you go to a doctor, like, for example, my doctor, I, I tend to go to, knows both the medical and the holistic side. She draws my blood and studies my blood and everything first before she makes an educated decision of what's needed for me. See, when a doctor rushes you in and out of the room, there's no way impossible that it can give you a proper uh, diagnosis on what you need. And if they are quick to write you a prescription, and I, I'm holding responsibilities for the statement. If a doctor is quick to give you a prescription and don't know one thing, has not asked you about your diet, or they're not taking care of themselves, they're less likely to tell you to exercise. They're less well, likely to tell you about meal prep. Those are things that doctors are supposed to do. They're supposed to tell you, okay, where are you off at? Just like a mechanic, you bring a car to a mechanic, you brought the car into this. And you know that, hey, if I don't put oil into my car, 
it's going to seize the engine. But just because it's a car, in the back of you are uh, in the, any auto body store, they have different types of oil. You just can't right. put any type of oil in the car because it's a, it's a vehicle. Every car is designed differently, but you got to know the science of the car. So I'm using that metaphorically to say that, as our sister said, you have to know your body, know what's going on in your body. And then when you go to a doctor, evaluate that doctor, what he's saying to you, because if he's quick to give you a medication, forget some of the doctors, not all, are some of the biggest drug dealers in the world because they get a commission off of the drug they push. So if you're not keen or they're easy to scare you into something, there's nothing wrong with taking a pause and then doing the research and finding doctors who are knowledgeable in nutrition, exercise, it was saying, and understand the medical field as well, because a good doctor is going to tell you you're fat. They're not going to tell you you're healthy because you can do a couple of laps from one end of the office <laughs> to the next. That's not a doctor. Or right. they tell you to do some silly exercise, they're going to evaluate from that. Because when I do an evaluation for any client, I got to know uh, what, how much can I push that person to, that li what limit. Some person are uh, gen uh, naturally uh, in shape, so I can push them a little harder. Somebody who never exercised and overweight and just because I'm in a certain shape, I'm not going to expect them to run on the treadmill at a certain speed because it's irresponsible on my part. And who am I feeding? Am I feeding my ego? Or am I looking out for my client? Mm -hmm. So we got to be mindful of those things when we go to anyone who's a doctor or a trainer or a, spe a specific specialist that are they qualified for what I'm looking for? And we got to be stern in belief that God has a mathematical answer for a lot of the things that we have. But we have to search and research qualified people for what we need. So that's why I wanted to make sure that we bring that into it because our sister and our brother are saying a lot of key things. But make sure that even what they're saying, research it. Do your yeah. homework. Don't do it off of face value because it sounds good. Do the research. And that's where the part of us not being lazy when it comes to ourselves because it's an inconvenience. No, we have plenty of time. So I'll look at it this way and I'll leave it at now, to give it back to our professionals here, my saying is this when somebody comes to me and say they don't have time for something. I say, how much time are you on social media? How much time do you watch TV? If you're watching more than 30 minutes of TV and you're on the cell phone for more than 15 minutes, you have more than ample time to exercise. It's not an inconvenience. A lot of us are on this phone longer than we can be on an exercise machine doing something. Even if you take a walk around the block. Take a walk around the block. Do something. Sitting down is not an option. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a defeatist mindset. So that's when I share from a personal trainer's point of view. Get active. Do something. It's going to be challenging in the beginning. Anything in the beginning is going to take work. But you're going to be tried to see if you really want it. But the reward is always going to be the results. Because that mirror don't lie. When you take a shower, you get at that, that mirror. <laughs> that's, that, that, I got to keep it 100 because like I've been in this business for that mirror don't lie. So that's why a lot of us, if you're being truthful, turn our back to that mirror because you don't like what we see. Mm -hmm. But if you stand in that mirror longer than 10 minutes, don't be mad at yourself. Okay, I can work on this. This can be fixed. I can do this a little better. Just be truthful with yourself. This way you can start seeing the results that you want and you're never too old to start exercising. So I just want to put my personal training um, spiel on that because you're seeing a lot of great things. But the psychological part is very key. Don't give in to anything because it's easy to conform to nothing. What's I was saying? Why do we love the devil? Because the devil offers us nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Tyreek, the floor is yours, brother. Oh, no. You know, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> y'all took the words right out of my mouth. You know, the, uh, the exercise and the fitness component is, is very much crucial to everything. You know, we have to come out our health, come at our health from a holistic standpoint, you know, and just to kind of go back on, you know, what I was, what about what my sister was saying about, you know, us certain people may not be able to eat certain things, you know, the enemy is, and it's not wrong. It's absolutely correct. You know, but what makes it, what makes it this way is how holistic our enemy is on us. You know, the enemy comes at us from different different ways. He comes at you economically. He comes at you uh, emotionally. He comes at you spiritually, domestically with your family, all kinds of ways, right? So oftentimes, you know, when people are experiencing any kinds of, you know, life stresses or, you know, any type of, any anything that will cause the body to go into some type of stress or it will, like I said before, exaggerate a normal process in the body, 
you know, sometimes we'll we'll experience things where we may not be able to consume certain foods because of our the condition of our bodies. Like Sister said, with, call, with cauliflower, right? Cauliflower should be it can be for everybody. It it can be, but unfortunately, the different things that we go through in life, like I said, with the different areas, can cause our bodies to reject certain foods. Not that they are not compatible with us. It's just that the way we live our lives, the way that the things that we go through interfere with the, 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 the nutrition or the benefit of these foods. You know, like I was saying before with, you know, fasting, fasting, like, like brother said, it's, it's a tool to help create discipline. But if there are certain environmental factors in your life, that are, you know, weighing down on you or causing issues, then the fast will not benefit you the way it should. You know, black black people would have to be living like Amish people <laughs> to really be to really take advantage of the the of, of all the benefits that it, there is to have with nutrition. We we have to be living so good, you know, to the point that we we can really take advantage of the benefits of these foods. But always just keep in mind, you know, lactose intolerance, all that stuff is fake. Right. That, that, that stuff, that's, that's, that's nonsense. Lactose intolerance is a genetically modified, is a result of consuming genetically modified foods or consuming foods that are no good for you. And you said something very important, you know, they haven't been able to, to genetically modify the Navy bean. Well, right. Emily, what's the purpose of, a, of making genetically modified foods? is mo most of the time biotech companies are creating GMOs because they want to fix a, a character flaw or a trait or, or a trait that they may that may they may not be desirable in that particular crop, right? But what is what is undesirable about the navy bean? Nothing. It's perfect. There's nothing to fix. So one of the reasons why they haven't been able to do it is one, they they have no desire to because there's nothing wrong with it. And two, there's a lot of, of fail safes built in to the Navy bean that keep it from being attacked like that. And one of the things is when, and, and I've, I've heard this in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's table talks, is that the Navy bean is blessed seven times. One of the fail safes is that it came from God. So it it would it wouldn't it wouldn't first of all it wouldn't serve them economically to uh, genetically modify it because there's nothing going on with it that's a problem, and, or that they want to see fixed. And second, it's been blessed by Allah, so they can't touch it. You know, so we have to we have to really go into Adi to live and examine the foods that He gave us because these foods are what sustain human life without you having to do all that extra stuff, and the extra stuff creates the like to intolerance it creates the the uh the flatulence it creates the high blood pressure it creates the the oh i can't eat that type of uh lifestyle you can eat it but your body just has to be able to uh be in the in, in the uh the proper state to eat it you know yes, sir. praise be to a lot well for the sake of time you want to i want to keep my word bond to our dear sister um closing remarks anything that we can do to add on to this phenomenal uh, conversation. Uh, I think we had a lot of jewels. Uh, I pray to those who are listening will definitely research what my brother and sisters have shared so eloquently with. So, Dr. Emmons, closing words, dear sister. So, my closing words are this. Everything that has been said that is not of value, throw it away. Because that is another problem. We tend to hold on to everything. You have to listen to information, get what's beneficial to you. And if it's not, cast it to the side because you are on a journey to be the best you, not the best me. You cannot be me. You cannot be Brother Tyreek. You cannot be Brother LaVon. You have to be the best you. So any information that you hear, it has to suit you. It has to be beneficial to you. It, there's no good. There's a world full of knowledge. But as myself and Brother Tyreek and Brother LaVon have done is we've gravitated to the knowledge that suits our purpose. We are living in our purpose. That's why we're free. So if you want to be free like us to just 
be able to discuss what it is that you're passionate about because that's what you live every day. So it flows effortlessly. You have to identify what you were made for and consume the right foods because the messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, eat right, then you can think right, then you could do right. I just put it like that, but he said, eat right, think right, do right. So when you don't eat right, you cannot uh, think right. And when you don't think right, you'll never do right. And if you're a Christian, that's what the Bible is talking about when it's talking about seal their foreheads because the knowledge has got to be there to understand when God is talking to you and understand God's word. That is fulfillment. The way your works, your hands, that's why you're being sealed in your foreheads and in your hands, they have the mark of the beast. That's the, the, the daily about doings that you're doing, your dealings. That's the mark of the beast. That's how you know if you're wicked or not because of the works that your hands do. If you're doing good works, you're of the good. And if you're doing bad works, you have the mark of the beast. So in this time that we live in, don't take anything as spooky. Wake up if you sleep right now and be like, you know what? I deserve to eat the best food. That's all this really falls down to because you can never be as successful as you want to be consuming cheap food, bad quality food, all of these GMOs, all of these uh, processed food items. You know, I personally am a person that's that I teach meditation. I didn't go into that. And I do teach a herbology course. I certify people and help them open up their own practice. And the reason why I brought that up is because Brother LeVon said that if a person is not dealing with your blood, as far as uh, giving you any kind of supplements or suggesting any type of uh, medication or whatever, he's absolutely 100% right and exact. And people who push supplements off on you run because how could they know what you need just because you opened your mouth? You don't, might not even know what you're talking about because a symptom can give you an adverse effect. I might say I'm groggy, but that's because I, I'm, I'm, there's something off in my body. You can't just say, go take a B12 or go take some uh, vitamin D. Oh, I know what's wrong with you. You anemic. No, you tell the, the person has to go take lab work. There's your blood. They could itemize it and find out any mineral, any vitamin, any chemical that's off. They could get all the levels. And before you do anything holistically, you need to seek a medical lab that's going to do some lab tests. And that I send all my clients to get lab work, period. You have to have lab work. I have fired clients. I know that sounds funny because if you won't submit to certain stuff, I don't need to work with you because my my professionalism and my career is on the line and no amount of money is worth that, you know? So even though like we, you know, they make us have insurance policies and everything, this is stuff you need to understand. Deal with professionals. And I agree with Brother LeVon because a professional is not eager to get your money. They're eager, they're eager to help you help yourself. So you have got to be willing to do what you have to do. You should come to them with willing to get lab works and everything. So that's all I want to say is I, I did love when he said that because I, I've actually had clients try to argue with me because they telling me I'm holistic. They thought holistic just meant I was going to give them some herbs and stuff like that. Like they're trying to tell me what to do. And I'm telling them I came from the medical field. Then I went holistic. I know how this works. I've seen people die. I've been with clients and I come back to work and they're no longer there, you know? So I've been on both sides of this. So you can't tell me, go get that lab work done. <laughs> So that's all I want to say. Beautifully said. Praise be to Allah. And that's and she said some key things. Brother Terry, closing words, my brother. Yes. Um, she I, I want to close on, you know, her point when she when she said, uh, when sister said, you know, we, we need to have qualified individuals and 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 people who know what they're talking about, right? You know, one of the reasons why it's so easy for for ed, for everybody to say anything. Is because there's not enough of us among among our among our communities and among our people that can really direct us in the right direction. So for for those who who don't who don't know, um, I'm one of the uh, regional POCs for the Ministry of Health and Human Services in Mid Atlantic Region, and one of the things that we're focusing on in the DMV area, Virginia, in the Carolinas, is to 
make sure that the Ministry of Health has enough representation in every city. Be, and, and the representation in that city has a sufficient medical knowledge, has sufficient medical knowledge and is able to understand how that uh, applies to the human body. Because a lot of times, you know, you may see people passing off, you know, supplements to somebody or, you know, they they giving you somebody giving you this on the side, somebody, you know, even with ivermectin, that was a that was a huge problem when it when it came out for COVID. People were giving people ivermectin like it was a, a, over the counter headache medication. Like that's not a whole prescription based weight based medication. You know, it's you can't secondhand ivermectin. So that's that's one of the things that you know, we're, we're trying to eliminate with the Ministry of Health is having these qualified individuals that you can go to, you know, outside of your primary care physician that, that can be of a second source of medical, uh, you know, or, of health care for you, you know. So I, I would say just just keep an eye out if you're in, in the DMV area, in the Carolinas, and, and just keep an eye on the things that are coming from the Ministry of Health, uh, which is a government uh, entity in the Nation of Islam, for those who are not familiar with the nine ministries. And just being be able to, you know, have those people around you, you know, in, in your city that you can go to, that that you can trust, that are qualified and know what they're talking about. That's one of the reasons why that keeps happening. It's because we don't have the type, the enough of what we need just a phone call away without going to a doctor's office, you know. So setting up that healthcare that healthcare uh entity and in, in healthcare environment in the nation of Islam is very crucial for, for, for the believers and our people. Praise be to Allah. And this was a definitely a beautiful program. And in my closing words, uh, I want to thank Allah for Brother Tyreek and Dr. Eminis for what Allah has put in their heart and their mind. And that we pray that those who are actually listening are taking notes. A good student takes notes and take what they say and do the research. Um, we, you have, if you have a doctor, uh, be respectful, ask questions. And you can be ask respectful questions if you're saying things that are not making any sense, what have you. There's nothing wrong because this is your body at the end of the day. And you got to do what's best for your body. And um, one thing I can definitely share with um, the listening audience is uh, if you're not sure for now, eat healthy. Eating healthy means eat your fruits and vegetables. Like the sister said, learn how to cook your meal. This way you know what's in it. Because you never know what the person in the kitchen is doing. If they got good habits, did they wash their hands? Did their food right. expire? You know, right. they you know they they looking at the business. Hey, I got all this stuff here. I know it's expired, but I don't want to throw it away. So how do you know what they're putting in your foods? Uh, why is there McDonald's and fast food restaurants in every corner, and it's so easy to get to? You know, if you can have time to sit and wait for a meal in the drive through for 20, 30 minutes, it doesn't take that much time to cook. So there's no such thing. Once again, we have to eliminate excuses when it comes to our health because the scariest thing that you can deal with is when you have a face-to-face -face encounter with death or possible death if they tell you you got cancer or you got an illness and they want to uh, load you up with medication. Let's do the preventative things as much as possible. Um, you can start today. The beauty about exercise, it starts working as soon as you start. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to work for no weeks it starts working and just be patient with the process. If anything you can take out of this, be patient with the process. When you go holistic, as our brother and sister says, and you do go natural, give it time for it to work. It's not going to work in three days or 24 hours. And you look in the mirror and you're looking for you to have a six pack. It don't work like that. <laughs> it takes time in order for you to see the results that you want. Uh but when, when you're taking time with the process and you're learning the signs about cooking, then you learn the science about exercise. Then you get, learn the science about fasting. And then you learn the science about sleep. So we, that's one part that, you know, we got to touch on a little bit on that sleep factor. Turn that TV off. Go to bed to the best of your ability. I know sometimes we get caught up in our TV shows and you're like, ah, then you wake up regret. Like, man, why did I stay up so late? You know what I'm saying? Because now your body is dragging. Now you find different things to make it through. So please, if you take anything out of this, please just get into a habit of living our community and other any other community, but especially our community, we want us to be healthy and live longer lives. There's no reason for us to be dying early at an early age at 60, 50, 40, even in our 30s. 
That's unheard yeah. of, all because we're not taking care of ourselves. Those are my mm-hmm. closing words. I want to thank my brother and sisters for coming on. And I also will have the information um, on my, my website and also links on to this podcast. And one more thing, and I like you put this in my head. We need more doctors and scientists and nutritionists in our community. We don't need we don't need more ball players. We don't need more uh uh s- rappers and and all those they're, they're fine. And it's one thing if you're gonna be an artist, you know, you're contributing to society in a positive way. But if you're adding to confusion and demise because you want to make a dollar, then you're a cancer to our community. So we need more doctors. Let's push those things in our schools and our churches and help those who are looking to go into that field. It's expensive, but let's support those so we can come back. Just like we had some of our sisters went over to Cuba to become doctors. Cuba has a phenomenal system where you can go to freedom because doctors are needed. So that would make more sense that you would make it easier for people to become doctors because they help the community. This world is crazy. It costs more money to do things that help people than it is somebody to catch a football or baseball. So we got to make sense out of these things. So we're not knocking if, you're, if that's your talent. But let's push those to be scientists and doctors in our home and push good examples in front of our children that, you know, those things are needed in our community. So that's all I have. Thank you, family, for being part of the program. I'll like continue to bless you. As-salamu alaykum. Well, thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, family. I definitely appreciate it. this. Was a, this was definitely a, a God-given program. Mm-hmm.